Today in The Sims 4, we're building apartments in Windenburg. Here we are in the town of Windenburg, and today we're actually building on this proprietor's square lot. It's a horizontal 30 by 20 lot, and I like how it's already enclosed and private feeling, so I thought this would be perfect for like townhouses or an apartment complex. And I saw this comment from Kylie, which had a bunch of likes on it, and basically they rounded up the top three ideas they saw throughout the comment section. So thank you so much, Kylie, for doing that, by the way. That was super helpful, and I don't expect you to go above and beyond like that every single time, but I seriously do appreciate it. And one of the suggestions was a row of Tudor apartments with terraces and a downstairs being like a bookstore slash coffee shop in Windenburg. And I've been super eager to build in Windenburg just because I feel like it's been ages since I last built here. So let's try our best to bring this idea to life today. As usual, please leave your comments down below what world we should tackle next for our apartment building series. And in case you're new here, I'll leave the entire series playlist in the description box down below in case you want to catch up on all of the episodes thus far. But with that being said, let's get started on our Windenburg apartments. Unless, unless there's an ad read. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's an ad read. A couple minutes of your time, please, let's watch the ad. <laughs> So it's probably a good time to tell you about today's sponsor, HelloFresh. In case you guys didn't know, I've actually been a user of HelloFresh for years now. So if you've ever been unsure about whether or not you should try it, just know that I've spent my personal money on it and I think it's fantastic. Whether you want to save money, eat better, or stress less about meal planning, HelloFresh is here to help with all of those things. Just choose your recipes and select a delivery date, then HelloFresh handles all of the grocery shopping and all you have to do is open your box of pre-portioned ingredients and cook them. By the way, you can skip weeks for free whenever you want to. So if you're going to be away or you have a lot of friend dinners lined up for the week, you don't have to receive a box every single week. It's super flexible. Their dinner menu now is absolutely huge. I swear they just keep giving us more and more options every year. There are now 45 plus dinner options, including calorie smart and protein smart recipes, as well as 15 minute quick meals, which are my personal fave. But the best part is HelloFresh is now offering you guys free breakfast for life. Yes, that's right. This is not a drill. Click the link in my description or use code DOCASHFREE to get one free breakfast item per box for life while your subscription is active. Everything tastes better when it's free, so let me know how the breakfast is. So I do have a very specific, but at the same time, also a not so specific vision for this build. I have a few different inspo picks. I'll pop them up on the screen right now. Of various townhouses, apartment complex, retail spaces that I kind of want to just meld together all onto this lot. On the right side here, we're going to have our like high rise apartment. And I'm going to add this octagon room here just to give it some dimension on the corner. In the middle, we'll have the bookstore or coffee shop. And then on the left hand side here we're gonna have just a traditional townhouse so here's our basic shell it does look a little bit sus right now but hopefully the roofing will bring it all together let's do a really pointy gabled roof piece here and another gabled roof piece for the main section we'll use these little bubbles to add a slight curve to the roof just to add some personality and for the townhouse we're also just going in with a basic gabled roof piece everyone says roofing is kind of difficult in the sims 4 but in reality you just have to put a bunch of gabled roof pieces in your golden for the octagonal turret, it makes the most sense to go in with an octagonal roof piece as well. I mean, that's a perfect fit. There's no complaints there. Now here is where the roofing might get a little bit more complex. So we're going to grab our square room tool and just draw a room on top here. Next, we grab our half-hipped roof pieces and we're basically going to make skinny one towel wide roof pieces all along the edges. So we'll bring it across like so and then raise it up to the height of the ceiling of the room. Make sure it goes tall enough so you can't see any of this wall right here. Let's duplicate this roof piece and bring it over to the other side. And we'll copy it again to put on this longer edge. Now we're left with this cool roof with this flat top. And just to clean up the edges here, I'm going to add a fence to the top. This black one from the base game should work just fine. I'll just draw a rectangle right here. We'll change our roof swatch to something black as well. And there we go, all three roofs are all done. Now let's work on the windows and doors. Obviously, I want to use a lot of get together on this build, so I'm just going to go in and filter by the pack, which by the way, if you don't have this pack yet and you're planning on purchasing it, you can use code Dr. Ashley at checkout on the EA app or on the sims.com and 5% of your purchase will go towards supporting my channel. That applies to all packs, by the way. You can use it on 
on kits, stuff packs, bundles, expansion packs, anything. I noticed in January, approximately like 40 of you guys used my code, which for the sake of transparency, resulted in approximately $12 of extra revenue for my channel. And I do just wanna take the time to say thank you to each and every one of you who has decided to use my code. I know that using a code is optional and there are tons of other creators out there that you can support. So I am very, very grateful that some of you have decided to choose me. Okay, so far I've only used get together assets on this house and I'm gonna continue that with these dormer windows. Just putting two on either side like so. Also, I am aware that it's asymmetrical. Like there are three tiles on this side, but four tiles on this side. And I'm just letting you know that I did that on purpose. I think it adds more character. Next, let's go in with these get together wall coverings. I'm always very excited to use these because I feel like you can only really use them in Windenburg. I mean, I'm sure it'd probably be fine to use them in like Newcrest or something, but to me, these just scream Windenburg. I'm also using a combination of a bunch of different patterns to give this house some dimension. And for the bottom floor, we'll use this get together stone instead. Now let's finish it off with this black base game trim. And oh my gosh, that just took it to the next level. I wanna go in with the full meal deal today. So let's use all of these get together decor pieces as well. And also adding these roof decor pieces. Get together seriously came with some amazing exterior build assets. To be honest, I always forget that Get Together is like amazing for building and then I'm shocked every time I use it. For whatever reason, it's just not like the first pack that comes to mind when I think of a building pack. But here's our Tudor style bookstore slash coffee shop all done. I think it looks so cute. Let's move on to the high rise now. I want each building to stand out from each other. So I'm not gonna use the get together pack on every single one. In fact, this one, I think I'm gonna lean more into Discover University with these windows. Going in with this beige high school years trim just so the building doesn't look so flat. I love how that's looking with the windows. Now for the wall coverings, I'm gonna go in with this cobbled brick from the cottage living pack on the bottom level only. And for the top floors, this dark rich green stucco from the jungle adventure pack. This is probably one of my favorite colored wall coverings in the entire game. I use it all the time. Just to make sure we can fit a lot of units here, I'm gonna grab the basement tool and also build downward, which is very unlike me. I never do basements, you guys. I have my small basement here. I'm just gonna click on this yellow outline line to remove the ceiling. We'll grab this stone staircase. You can go down to the lower level like so. And then down in the basement here, I'll just draw a small unit. This will just be a very modest basement suite. And of course, we can't forget to give the basement suite some large windows so they get some natural light. And we'll finish off with the Strangerville fence around the edge so you don't accidentally like fall into the hole there. <laughs> okay, before I forget, I should lay down some pavement and I was thinking of going in with this one from Dine Out. The shape is rather different, but the tone of the gray actually does blend in nicely with the surrounding pavement. And now I'm just gonna go in with some finishing touches around the exterior and I'll be right back. And here's the residential building all done. I just added this like DIY awning and this really pretty door from Strangerville. I think this is gonna be like our front door section. These beige columns are just from the get together pack. And then I also added this floral get together vine decal all the way up the side of the building. Oh, and I also added this base game chimney, but I absolutely love how these two buildings contrast against each other. This one is a bit darker and moodier. And then this side, is like feminine and light. Okay, but I'm starting to get super excited about how this is turning out. So let's finish up with this townhouse so we can work on the interior. Maybe we can use the get together pack here, but go in with lighter swatches instead. Let's try out this huge bay window. It's kind of intense looking, but I kind of love it. I also just realized that we're using medium wall height on the first level, which means we are blessed with all of these medium wall height doors. Maybe this is a hot take. I mean, it's probably not, who am I kidding? But the medium wall height doors are a lot nicer than the short wall height doors. They're just so much more intricate and grand looking. I don't know. We are of course going to use these get together flower boxes. I warned you guys in the beginning, we're gonna be using a lot of get together here. And I seem to have forgotten to roof this little spot right here. So I think I'm actually just gonna go in with this half wall piece. For the walls, I was thinking of using this brick from the get together pack. And then I noticed something interesting. This one right here, which is right next to the get together one is from the city living pack. And from what I can see, it's quite literally the exact same brick. Like it matches up perfectly. The get together one just has the trim and the city living one has no trim. So I don't necessarily have anything negative or positive to say about that. I am merely making an observation. 
It would probably make more sense if they were in the same pack, but at the same time, Get Together and City Living came out so long ago that it's like, you probably have those packs already, right? Okay, I want to add a porch here for our townhouse, but I don't want to raise it up on a foundation because then everything has to be on a foundation. So I'm just going to add a small platform here. And because we have it on medium wall height, we do have enough like ceiling allowance for that to happen. This townhouse is supposed to be more residential, so maybe we should give it a tiny little lawn out front and then maybe add like a fence or something so they can have some privacy. Okay, I just added a few finishing touches. First of all, I added these dormer windows from the Discover University pack. Also added this DIY trellis on top of the porch, similar to how we did it on the apartment complex. So this is where we're at for all three exteriors of our apartment complex. I mean, can we even call this an apartment complex anymore? It's basically a city block at this point, let's be honest. I am pretty stoked with how this is looking so far. I'm just gonna go in with some finishing touches off camera, like some street lamps and some benches, just so it blends in with the environment but I'll be back in one second to show you the finished result. All right, it's literally dark now, but here is what I've done with the exterior. I made it look more like a sidewalk and added these planter boxes as well as some of these benches. Around the side of the apartment building over here, I also added these little balconies with some fire escapes going all the way down. I've been really loving the like outdoor side of the building fire escapes lately. I don't know why. In the back of the apartment building, I just have this small backyard area. And then for our bookstore slash coffee shop, I thought it would be a cool idea to add a mini parking lot. I obviously used these cars from the debug section and I just thought it would be a good way to make it look more retail and commercial and less like residential. And then finally for our townhouse, I just added a small porch and a grassy backyard. But that is going to be it for the exterior of our Windenburg city block. I don't even know what to call this anymore. I am really proud of how this exterior looks. I don't think I've done anything like this before and I'm especially happy that we are able to fit this Tudor style building in the center as like our focal point because ultimately I think it's this middle building that really ties it to the Windenburg aesthetic. So please let me know what you guys think of this exterior in the comments down below. Like I said, I've never really done anything like this so I welcome any feedback you guys might have but I am very excited to get started on the interiors. I've gone ahead and done all of the floor plans off camera because let me tell you, nobody wants to see me struggle doing a floor plan in real time. And can I just say that the difficulty of floor plans planning is so underrated. Like most people will say roofing is the hardest part of building, but in my opinion, floor planning is definitely up there. And by the way, when I say floor planning, I also mean like staircase placement because that can be a huge headache sometimes. I guess we'll start with the basement suite. It's pretty straightforward. Just a small bathroom and a big open area right here. For our townhouse, we're gonna have open concept kitchen, living and dining on our first floor with a small powder room. And then upstairs, we have a primary bedroom, a secondary bedroom and one large shared bathroom. I think this townhouse will be perfect for like a small starter family, like maybe parents that are expecting their first child. Okay, now onto the retail space. So when you walk in on the bottom level, this will just be the bookstore slash library slash cafe. I haven't decided what it's gonna be yet. But then on the upstairs, we're gonna have like a rental suite. Most likely the owner of the bookstore slash coffee shop lives up here. We have one bedroom here, a bathroom, and then this is just an open concept kitchen living dining area. Now onto the apartment complex. So through this front door, we'll just enter the lobby area, maybe put some seating in like the mail room or something. Then onto the second level, we'll just have one unit on this floor. And then finally on our third floor, we have a little bit of a larger unit. We have all this open concept space down here, but we also have a second level up top for perhaps a loft bedroom. So in total, we have one, two, three, four, four, five at the basement suite, five units total in this street block. I think that's gonna be pretty good. It feels very realistic. We have everything from a townhouse to a penthouse suite to a basement suite. There's something here for everybody. I also like how these units feel like more of a realistic size. My one pet peeve with city living, despite it being my favorite pack in the world, is the apartments in city living are way too big to be realistic. I mean, come on, like who lives in an apartment that big? Not me, that's for sure. Okay, I don't know which unit I wanna get started with. I'm thinking maybe this middle one since this is what inspired this entire build essentially. Perhaps we should go in with a lighter floor to match the walls. What do you guys think? Now a lot of you guys were recommending I turn this into a little coffee shop or perhaps a bookstore. Maybe I can combine those ideas and still put this little cafe bar and then just put a bunch of bookshelves around the place. Even though this lot will be classified as a residential lot and won't operate as a functioning cafe, hopefully you'll be able to hire some 
someone to come tend to this bar, or perhaps you'll just have to make the coffee yourself and sit down. It can be like a self-serve coffee bar. I don't love the stone walls. Perhaps this other one from Get Together will work better. Okay, kind of liking that a little bit better. Now I want to make sure we have enough space for our bookshelves and some seating. Let's just close off this staircase area so we have more walls to work with. As far as Get Together bookcases, we only have this one and it is quite short. So I'm hoping I can choose a bookshelf that really takes advantage of the medium wall height. This one's really tall and really pretty. It's actually from the Strangerville pack, oddly enough. If I had to take a wild guess as to where this bookshelf was from, I would not have guessed Strangerville, that's for sure. And then this slightly wider one is from Discover University. So why don't we use both of these? Okay, I kind of got carried away a little bit and turned this coffee shop into a bookshelf maze. I just covered all of the blank walls with the bookshelves and then also kind of used them as room dividers to create nooks in the room. I could fill all of these nooks and all of these sections with some cafe tables. It just makes the space look a little bit more interesting than randomly placing the tables like there's some purpose to the room. As for the chairs, I was considering like mismatching the chairs and using a combination of just a bunch of random ones. These ones are from Cottage Living, but then I was thinking maybe I could use like a base game one over here, and then maybe these wicker ones from the Seasons pack as well. Just trying to add as much dimension and visual interest as possible. And then we'll also put a few plants on the table and perhaps clutter up these little shelves. Okay, that looks really cute. And I think that's gonna be it for our downstairs coffee shop and library area. I think this looks very unique and interesting. I love how it turned out. There's no guarantee by the way that the coffee shop area will function properly like with a barista. However, if you can hire one when you're here, go ahead and do that. Otherwise you can just go and make your own cup of coffee and then sit down and read some books, do some work. If you're a resident in one of the units on this lot, you can come here for a first date or something. But either way, I think it's kind of a fun and different spin on a communal space. So let me know what you guys think of this down below and let's work on the upstairs unit. For the sake of continuity, I'm just gonna bring the same wood from downstairs up here. Now, unfortunately, the Get Together expansion pack didn't come with any new kitchen stuff. However, luckily the base game items do work quite well with this pack. Like in some ways, these base game counters somehow match the Get Together aesthetic more than it matches the base game aesthetic, if you know what I mean. I feel like that made no sense, but it makes perfect sense in my head. <laughs> I don't necessarily have a particular sim in mind as to who lives here. I just want to make sure that the aesthetic looks nice and the aesthetic is get together. That's the theme today. Okay, I just changed the kitchen orientation around and then swapped out for these growing together kitchen appliances. I'll add in some of our basic clutter from the base game right here. They seriously need to put the fruit bowl higher up in the catalog. I don't need to be scrolling past all these bowling items before I find my beloved fruit bowl. Either that or I've just missed it because I've been scrolling for a long time. <laughs> Am I asking for too much when I say I just want to find things naturally in the catalog? Like I don't want to live my entire life just manually searching for things every single time. Like I completely understand that you can use the search bar to search for a specific item whenever you want. And believe me, I've literally like memorized the name of every single item I like. I want to be able to search for the item naturally in the catalog and then perhaps stumble upon another related item that I wasn't necessarily looking for but still serves the correct purpose because it's categorized correctly. Okay, for the living room, it's time to get out this beautiful fireplace from the horse ranch pack. I like how low profile it is, but I also love the details on it. It's just so pretty and intricate. It's definitely one of the more underrated items in the pack. They still deserve a TV though, so maybe I can put like this little side table in the corner and then mount a tiny TV on it? Ah yes, this'll do. This is better than nothing. <laughs> Let's get rid of these overhead lights. It's time to swap out for some mood lighting. I'm thinking this vintage one from the Growing Together pack. Maybe some of these floral sconces from the Cottage Living pack. And this Cottage Living overhead light for the kitchen. This laundry day rug is a staple for our living room. And here's our basic open concept kitchen, dining, and living room for our first unit all done. I didn't clutter it up too much, so there's still room for you guys to customize things and add your own skill building stuff if you want to, but let's move on to the bathroom and bedroom now. For the bathroom, it's pretty simple. I'm just using this get together mirror and sink vanity, and I think I'm gonna use the get together bathtub as well. You know what? I don't think I've ever actually used this bathtub before. Like this looks very new to me. I never realized how square it is and the details down here. Like I've definitely never used this tub before. It's kind of pretty though. I like it for sure. Wait, is there a get together toilet I also don't know about? 
Oh, wait, no, it's it's just the pea bushes. Never mind, never mind, false alarm. We're just gonna continue with the base game toilet. Oh, we do have some of these get together floor tiles that we could use in the bathroom. These could be fun. Let's just put these curtains here to cover the window for some privacy. And here is our bathroom all done. Onto our bedroom now. So we do have a pretty decently sized bedroom, which is nice. We can maybe fit a desk here or like a wardrobe. Let's use this bedroom set from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. Grabbing more of these sconces for either side of the bed instead of table lamps. We'll put our get together desk in this nook right here and then finish it off with this bespoke dining chair from Cats and Dogs. It's kind of like a get together slash cats and dogs fusion happening right now. Thank goodness we got this tall skinny dresser from the Growing Together pack because we are running out of space in this room. Since there's some orange on this cushion here, I'm going in with these orange curtains on this side just to tie it in. But if that's too loud for you, you can always just change it to black like so and it'll be neutral. But I just thought I'd be more fun and change it up. As a final finishing touch, I think I need to add this painting from the Cats and Dogs pack. It perfectly ties in the brown, blues, and oranges of this room. So everything's starting to make sense. And there you have it. Here is our one bedroom, one bathroom apartment on top of a coffee shop slash bookstore all done. I think this is a really great and realistic size for a starter apartment. It's not that cluttered, so you can still come in and add your own personalization. And overall, I just think it would be a really cool place to live. So let me know down below what you think of it and let's move on to the next one. Okay, I kind of want to move on to our high rise apartment because I want to do the lobby in particular. Maybe it would be cool to go in with this mosaic tile for the lobby. I don't know, maybe it's kind of too much. We can maybe tone down the edges a bit. Something like this maybe, or is it kind of silly? Perhaps this base game wallpaper with the wainscoting could be fun. Usually in the lobby, that's where like the mail room would be. So I'm gonna put our mailbox just right here. Can anybody let me know if the mailbox will still work if I put it inside or if I have to put it outside like for the mailman? <laughs> Next, let's go in with some lobby couches, just something simple and elegant. Maybe these ones from the Vintage Glamour pack with the matching Vintage Glamour fireplace as well. I still want it to feel like it's slightly older, but maybe they've updated the furniture over time. Let's grab this huge low-lying chandelier from the Horse Ranch pack. Perhaps they have a lighter swatch we can use. You must admit that's pretty epic. And now let's find something grand to put over the fireplace. I have yet to use these large paintings from the Get Together pack so this might be a good opportunity. Who is this lady anyways? It's the portrait of Lady Mimsy. Well, perhaps Lady Mimsy helped fund the construction of this building or something. <laughs> now let's go in with a bunch of plants around the room just to contrast and bring to life all of this white color. And we'll finish off with this fancy slash old looking lamp from the base game. <laughs> and here is our luxurious apartment lobby all done. I really like how the mosaic floor tile is kind of like the centerpiece of this room. I've never used those before. And then we just kept it really simple for everything else. And I think this lobby is really gonna set the tone for how the upstairs units are gonna look. And I'm really excited to get started on them. Okay, onto this first unit. Now, initially I thought this was a lot of space, but seeing as this is gonna be the bathroom, this will probably be the dining room. We don't really have a logical place to put the bedroom. So I'm thinking I might have to make this like a studio apartment of sorts. Maybe put this peachy seasons bed just on the floor right here and then hit it with our handy dandy curtain and spandrel trick. We use this one a lot in our trailer park build. Okay, that's a really cute bedroom nook. Now I want to solidify this as our dining room, obviously going in with our favorite marble base game table. And I'm really gravitating towards these wicker chairs from the paranormal pack. Okay, we like seriously have nowhere to put a kitchen. We're gonna have to put it in this corner here and pray that it fits. Let's grab this cute pink fridge from the country kitchen kit. And then for counters, how do we feel about these white and beige ones from the country kitchen kit as well? We have no choice but to slightly cover this window with our countertop so you know we gotta we gotta get over that now <laughs> then we'll place down one of these dream home decorator ovens i think i'm gonna do the pink on pink okay here's our small kitchen all cluttered up i just have these plate stacks from the home chef hustle stuff pack and these mugs from the everyday clutter kit now i just need to somehow squeeze in something that resembles a living room and we'll be golden <laughs> 
We can mount this tiny living TV console on this diagonal wall here. And then for couches, I really want to use something from the book nook kit. I don't know if we're going to be able to fit it or not. Okay, for this big couch, probably not. Here's hoping I can use it upstairs though. So I'm going to put it up there for now. Perhaps we can kind of reimagine the bedroom here. What if we instead turned the bed this way and sectioned it off a little bit more? Put these large windows here like so. We'll put the TV over in this corner. So if you want to watch TV, you basically have to watch it from the bed. This is a studio apartment after all. What do you expect? And then on this wall right here, we can still put a full length mirror so they can change their clothes. We're going for the bare minimum gameplay functionality here. I don't know. This is a really challenging one, you guys. Everything just feels a little squishy. So perhaps I should instead go in with a half wall instead of these windows. You get a little bit of room separation, but it just overall feels more open, I think. I think I need to do something about these floors. These floors are really causing me a lot of problems. They're just like not good, you know? Okay, I think this is what we're gonna settle on. This is as good as it's gonna get. I'm actually kind of okay with the layout at this point. I like how if you're cooking dinner in the kitchen, you still have a clear view of the TV. And as far as studio apartments go, this one is quite nice and unique. And I do like how there is a formal dining area. So when you have your friends over and you wanna like, you know, go on your laptops and chill and do work or hang out, you can still host people. The color scheme is very light and bright. I did have some trouble balancing all of the lighting because the lighting in The Sims kind of glitches when you add in spandrels and half walls and section off things weirdly. But I think going in with some more clutter, like maybe some plants on this ledge here would be kind of cute. Maybe a dirty coffee mug on this ledge as well. It just makes it look more lived in. But let me know what you guys think of this studio apartment. Let's quickly do the bathroom and then work on our upstairs unit. Here is what I did for the bathroom, just a simple combination of base game and get together. Now let's work on the unit upstairs. I wanted this unit to contrast against the studio apartment and instead of pink, I wanted to add a lot of black. We have our fake base game fireplace here with the frame TV, which I think looks super sophisticated. And then I did manage to use the couch from the book nook kit. Similar to the studio apartment, we have our dedicated dining room in this octagonal room. And then this kitchen layout here is not ideal by any means, but at the same time, it looks kind of chic and minimalistic, especially with the beige and black. On this side, we have our bathroom and also a desk setup. I decided to add one pop of color since we've basically only used black, brown, and beige in this unit so far. And then going upstairs, we just have our loft style bedroom. The tones are a bit warmer up here, and I also replaced part of the roof with a glass roof piece instead, just so this bedroom could have some natural light. It was looking kind of gloomy otherwise. Moving over to our family townhouse and this is what the main kitchen living and dining area looks like i really leaned into the orangey wood tone from the exterior and just kept it pretty neutral otherwise you'll have to add in some color yourself with some family portraits or maybe your kids art projects or something but i think this is a pretty good base for you to come in and add your own personality and we also have a powder room downstairs for visitors and a window bench here to do some reading here are what the bedrooms look like upstairs. They are pretty bare and simple, but I did go for like kind of autumn-y colors, I feel like. And then we have a large bathroom over here with both a shower and a bathtub. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot to tour the basement suite, but here it is. It's just one big studio apartment. I used some of the more disheveled objects like in the kitchen here to make it look more basement-y. But overall, this floor plan is actually really good for a studio. Like it has a lot of space. The kitchen is pretty huge. We also have a full living room area and a desk. So yes, you are in a basement, but the extra space is pretty nice. Well, you guys, that's going to be it for our Windenburg apartment complex slash bookstore and cafe. I think this is such a cute little addition to the Windenburg neighborhood, and I'm pretty happy with the diverse range of accommodation that's available here. Please let me know down below which unit is your favorite and which one you would want to live in. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And down Download this law on the gallery. My ID is Dr. Underscore Ashley. Thank you so much for your support as always. It is so much fun to make videos with you guys. Also, I'm sorry I forgot to film an outro, hence the voiceover. But nonetheless, I cannot wait to see you guys next week. And as usual, I hope you have a very, very, very above average day. I love you. Bye.